state Kirchhoff's first law. There are two laws of Kirchhoff. One is for current, uh, one is for potential difference and energy. First law refers to current. We basically say the sum of current in equals the sum of current out at the junction. What's a junction? Then you go here to a junction. If you split the current, I mean, this is what we call a junction. Lah. 3 amps in means you must have at least 2 plus 1. These two add together must equal to what is going in. So we can say that this is the algebraic sum of current into a junction is equal to sum of current out of the junction. Wow, this is a lot of words. Yeah, it's basically this idea, but don't just write the equation, explain it in words. So let's move on to the next part. Now you have, oh, oh you have a circuit of 120 volt, sorry, 12 volt battery internal resistance, filament lamp here, and resistor. Current is 3.6 given to us, and 2.1 through the resistor. The IV characteristic for the lamp is shown. Hmm. Before I even go to the question, I I want to look at this this diagram a little bit. We just talked about Kirchhoff's law. 3.6 going into a junction. 2.1 come out. Well, don't forget this line. There's also one more current here. And that will be 1.5 amps. How do I know? 3.6 equals to 1.5 plus 2.1. Is this correct? If correct, then that's how you can find the current. Anyway, this is like a jigsaw puzzle. Let's move on. So the this filament lamp, the resistance will change depending on the current through it and the voltage. So they give us this IV characteristic curve for the lamp. What are we supposed to do? Find the resistance of the lamp in figure 6.1. Resistance, generally there's two equations. R equals to rho L over A and V equals to IR. Now this one, there's no mention about length. Usually it's for wires. Ah. But no mention of length, no cross-section area, so we can't use that. So we have to use Ohm's law or actually not Ohm's law because the lamp is not omnic. omic. We just have to use this equation. Ohm's law is not really called Ohm's law. Lah. Okay. So V, I, R, we want to find resistance. We need to know the V and I. Hmm, how to find V and I? Um, let's go back to this one. We do know the 1.5 amps is flowing through this lamp. So all we need to find now is what is the potential difference across this lamp called the V. Let's use the graph. Why not? We know 1.5, there should be a certain V associated with 1.5. So we go to 1.5, which is roughly here. Dun, 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 dun. And then go down. Dun, 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 dun. This is about 4.2 or 4.4. I think it's 4.4. I can't really see. Yeah, I think it's 4.4. It looks like it. So we know V. We know I. We can find R. Let's plug it all in. V found from the graph is 4.4. I, which found from Kirchhoff's law, is 1.5. This is not an ohmic resistor. Because you can see this is not a straight line, so this is not exactly Ohm's law, but you can do ratio. Uh, VIR still is okay. But it's not, it does not obey Ohm's law. So this one gives you R 2.933 Ohm. This is 2.9 if you write it to 2 SF. 3 marks. 1 mark for this, 1 mark for equation, and 1 mark if you read off from graph. You, you sub in the correct values, sub, sorry, not read, sub values from graph. Okay. Next, determine the internal resistance of the battery. Oh, where do we start, man? Um, so we want to find internal resistance of the battery. We know the current flowing through the battery, which is 3.6, the same as the other one. Something to note is that this this V, uh, we know V is, what is it called? 4.4, right? Oh no, that looks like a 9. 
this is 4.4. Okay, so we don't know where to start. Let's just write out all the information we know. Here's 4.4 volts. And because the lamp and the resistor are parallel to each other. Okay, we need to zoom in already. Not enough space. Okay, here. 4.4 volts. Down here also parallel. So also 4.4 volts. Which also means that the battery is supplying 4.4 volts. This whole battery. 4.4 volts supplied to the whole circuit. So you notice this is wait, wrong pen. Highlighter, highlighter. This is the same as this, is the same as this. Why? Because they're all in series. Oh, sorry, in parallel to the battery. So battery kind of provides that for everyone. So this 4.4 for the battery is what we call terminal potential difference. So V terminal. Now, if you think of it, it's something strange. Shouldn't the battery provide 12 volts? Because, you know, that's the battery, ma. But you see, there's a problem here. You have 12 volts, but you lose some thanks to this annoying internal resistance. So this is what we call lost volts. So how you can relate all this is through a, kind of an energy conservation equation. If you have an EMF, that's right here, EMF, if you lose, you minus off your lost volts, this will give you the terminal potential difference. Battery is supposed to have 12. You lose some energy already thanks to internal resistance, so the battery gets hot. So you connect the battery in a circuit. What actually comes out is 44.4. So you use this equation to help us calculate. Let's go back down there. All right. Where is my... Hmm? Oh, there it is. So we're going to write out that very same equation that we did up there. If you need to see it again, just scroll back, rewind the video, you'll be able to see it. So our EMF, I use that symbol, minus out whatever we have lost will give us a terminal potential difference. Okay, fair start. Then we know EMF is going to be uh, this. Lost volts can also apply V equals to IR inside. Okay, so whatever you lost is due to an internal resistance. V lost equals to IR. So this one can be the current flowing through the battery times your internal resistance and this will give you a terminal potential difference. So let's plug in everything we know. 12 EMF minus the current through battery, 3.6 times the internal resistance. Aha, this is where we can find that. And the terminal PD is 4.4. This will give you a value of R, 2.1111. Okay, like just right here, 2.1 can already. 2 to 3 SF is okay. This is your final answer. If you substitute your correct values into, it is called Kirchhoff's Law, la, variation of Kirchhoff's Law, correctly, then get a C1 mark. All the values. Last one. Is this last one? No, this is not the last one. Oh, there's another part at the back. <gasps> Calculate, okay, the initial energy stored in the battery is 470 kilojoules. What energy is this, may I ask? Think of a battery cell. That looks kind of something like this. Depending on what your battery cell is, there's some chemical stuff inside here. There's a rod, there's some juice, there's some don't know what ions and all the metals. And I do the chemistry stuff, you would remember that thing. <laughs> so inside your battery, there's chemical energy stored chemical energy stored and when you connect your battery in a circuit okay so this is initial it converts into emf so let's say i connect to circuit so chemical energy becomes electrical energy in the circuit okay we're going to assume that the emf doesn't and current is constant do not change in time Calculate the time taken for energy stored to become 240 joules. So it's an energy conversion. This is energy lost or rather converted to, let's call this chemical energy loss or converted to electrical energy. In fact, that is the definition of what the EMF is. Okay, 470. After a certain time, it drops down to 240. So we can start off with our EVIT equation. 
E equals to VIT. Actually, P equals to IV also can. Power equals to IV. But power is called a change in energy over time. During that change. So we can find... What are we trying to find? Time taken. Mm, let, me let me rearrange this first. So change in energy is related to VIT. This is another form of the equation you can memorize. So memorize this one. Or memorize this one. It will help you a lot. Change in energy. So we are changing from 470 to 240. Oh, kilojoule. Lah. Okay, times 10 to the 3. And what V shall I plug in here? Here we are looking at the battery cell. The battery generates some EMF because of the energy change. So we need to multiply really by the EMF. EIT. Lah. Okay, lah, but we write down the values. So EMF here is 12. Current through the battery is 3.6 and the time taken. If you plug in all these values, you will get a time of 5324 seconds. Okay, let's write that down. Okay, 5324. Is it seconds, right? Okay, I'll just write 5. I mean, you can write 5300, 5320, I don't know. Just write some number. So this will be one mark. The other one is probably substitution or usage of one of the equations, PIV, EVIT, EVIT also can. So make sure you sub in the correct values. Substitution. Okay, so that's, remember, chemical energy is being converted at a certain rate. So energy stored, I guess you could call it chemical potential energy or something like that. Alright, let's move on to the last part. So now you have filament wire of the lamp. Aha! This is probably where we will have to use the other resistance equation. R equals to rho L over A. Because when we talk about wires, chances are we are going to use that equation. So inside, you zoom into the light bulb, you see this wire. And some data is given to us in the table. Okay, so for the wire, you got cross-section area and uh, number density. So what are we supposed to do? Ratio of drift speed of free electrons in the filament wire. And... In copper so from from the filament wire in the light bulb to copper wire in the circuit how do we ratio think about a, a equation for drift speed what's the equation for drift speed uh, I think a little bit so you think about in this thing uh, there's actually many many electrons moving around they're all moving at a certain speed uh, so something like that okay and there's an equation generally for that I equals to Nave. N A V E or N A V Q. So a current inside a conductor is due to all these all these variables. So drift speed is the V over here. So if we rearrange, you get V equals to I over N A E. So before we plug this whole equation into the ratio, maybe you want to simplify a little bit. What is constant here? Between filament and copper. The first one I can tell you is current is constant. The current flowing here must be the same as the current flowing here must be the same as the current flowing here. Because you cannot just have current disappear. There's no junction. I mean, if there's a junction and you go somewhere here, can lah. But there's no junction. Current is the same. So this is constant. Number density between filament and copper is different. Ne? Filament, copper. Uh, so that's not constant. Cross-section area is definitely not constant. The area of copper is so much bigger. E is constant, yes, so this is constant. So at the end of the day, you have V that is proportional to 1 over Na. This is what we plug into our equation now. So let's go, let's go. So for filament and copper, so V of filament over V of copper. We have our 1 over Na. So 1 over Na for filament over 1 over Na for copper. If I rewrite everything, this will be uh, Na for copper and Na for filament. Do your maths a little bit carefully. Lah. Plug in all the values we know. Okay, let's go. So N of copper. Do you use a table now? Here we go. N of copper, 2.5 N. Cross-section area of copper, 360A. Now, divide by filament, 
Number density is just N. Area of filament is A. Wow, so convenient. Uh. Cancel, 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 cancel. This will give me a value of 900. <laughs> so the, wow, the electrons are moving in a much faster speed in the filament. Okay, interesting. So, no wonder the thing can get hot and then it start glowing. Ah, yeah. So, this is one mark for final answer. And another one for you substituting the ratio. So, kind of like here, you substitute the ratio of 1 over Na for the average drift speed, then you are okay. Good to go. And I think that's the end. Okay, yep, that's the end of this question. So, make sure you know your chapter 9 and 10 for electricity and circuits, you'll be okay. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.